Reprise de débat. L'honorable député de Fredericton. Merci, Madame la Présidente, et merci à mon collègue pour partager son temps avec moi. Uh, I want to begin by acknowledging that the land we are gathered on today is the unceded Algonquin Territory, um, and I, I represent the unceded, unsurrendered Wolsto Gallic Territory uh, in Fredericton, New Brunswick. I think it's important that we uh, predicate our conversation today on, on that piece. Uh, and, Madam Speaker, I'll be honest, I, I could have started by stating really how, how deeply disappointed, um, you know, even saddened I, I was by the motion um, that, the bloc, that the bloc decided to focus on today for their precious time in opposition uh, as an opposition day motion. Um, but you know what? I, I've changed my tune in listening to the conversations that we're having today because I'm going to thank them for this opportunity to discuss inequality in Canada particularly in academia, because it is a pervasive issue um, that needs concrete steps to address, and so we're going to be able to take that chance to discuss that today. So I'm going to thank them for that. Alors, merci à mes collègues du Bloc québécois, mais j'espère que les membres écoutent les autres perspectives et qui portent une attention particulière au discours des collègues qui sont justement touchés par la question. Les femmes, les personnes autochtones, noires, membres de la diversité. And I want to take a moment to say to everyone who is listening to this debate at home, the black or indigenous researchers, the women and people living with a disability, not only are you qualified, but your life experiences and your identity are an asset to your work and to improve the quality of the research in Canadian institutions. Yeah, yeah. And Madam Speaker, I am a white woman born in Canada. I've been so fortunate in my life that I was able to chase my dreams and reach my goals and have a good life for my children. The first point I would like to make on this motion is that there is no acknowledgement of the high privilege experienced by white males in particular in this country. Perhaps it's important for context to explain how we came to be debating this today. Le point litigieux est que le bloc réagit au fait qu'un poste ait été réservé aux femmes, aux autochtones, aux personnes en situation de handicap ou bien à celles faisant partie d'une minorité visible. And I've heard my you know, honorable colleagues mention, you know, that you actually I'll read the, the, you know, the, the motion itself. The House denounced all forms of discrimination. Absolutely. In the opinion of the House, research is necessary for the advancement of science and, so and society in general. Absolutely. Access to the Canada Research Chairs Program must be based on the candidate's skills and qualifications. Vraiment. The House call on the government to review the program's criteria to ensure that grants are awarded based on science and not based on identity criteria or unrelated to the purpose of research. Well, there's a lot to unpack with such characterizations and assumptions that are baked into this motion. I've heard members warn of a dystopian alternate, alternate reality if such targeted hiring measures are allowed to continue. These arguments dangerously hinge on replacement theory rhetoric. We are all too familiar with, with that fact in Canada. Actually, knocking on doors in my riding this weekend, I was faced with these kinds of opinions. They're very real. They do not need us to, to stroke them, to encourage them in this place in particular. And so this idea that by not supporting Indigenous women, for example, from applying for research chair positions is going to somehow threaten um, you know, the existence of, of white males in our society and their positions of privilege um, is outlandish, uh, to say the least. It's a fact, Madam Speaker, that when diverse perspectives and voices are at the table, the outcomes are better. But diverse voices historically have been excluded from participating in research, and today people continue to face systemic barriers within the research field, including pervasive systemic racism. Systemic barriers within academia and the research ecosystem are well documented in Canada. And it's our responsibility as a government to play a role in addressing these barriers to ensure that equity, diversity and inclusion are integrated into all parts of the research ecosystem, indeed even in the hiring practice. The lack of diversity leads to oversight, bias and mistakes. I heard the leader of the bloc in particular talking about the, the dangers of excluding. Dangerous. Madam Speaker, I would argue that the danger resides in the status quo. Years of not implementing direct action to ensure diversity among our institutions leads to gaps in our collective knowledge. And I can give so many examples. The fact that women are excluded from the medical field led to ignoring the impact of certain medications on their bodies, on not having accurate protocols, on ignoring their needs, and not understanding conditions specific to them. I'm thinking of the lack of knowledge and treatment on endometriosis, for example. 
So many women across this country suffer immensely from the fact that for decades, no interest was put into researching this topic whatsoever because the vast majority of researchers did not have a uterus. Thus, not impacted by that condition, it was not seen as a priority to study or pro to provide that care. The lack of Indigenous voices in the sciences field, for example, led to deep gaps in our collective knowledge in fighting the climate crisis. For example, wildfires. Indigenous fire stewardship blends intergenerational knowledge, beliefs and values with advanced methods of controlling several aspects of fire, a more holistic approach. Small, prescribed or cultural fires can recycle nutrients into the soil, support the growth of plant species used for food and medicine. Fire stewardship can also protect communities in uh, central British Columbia. So fire is commonly applied to the spring and the fall to reduce the risk of lightning fires that may come, come, cause harm in communities in the summer months. This is just a very concrete example. Indigenous knowledge regarding health, the environment, sociology, history, and language was not only ignored, but since the foundation of this country, institutions tried to suppress and indeed eliminate it. That is a fact. Other types of systemic barriers face. Within the research field, there continues to be wage gaps between men and women, and between white and indigenous and racialized staff. Across Canadian universities, black people and indigenous people continue to face racism from their colleagues, overt, internalized, <laughs> face barriers in advancing their career because of unconscious or implicit bias on hiring <coughs> committees, such as a bias in their perspective of their resumes from white versus non-white can candidates, and a bias against people who have accents, for example. This is the reality in this country. Women also face barriers, including stereotypes, uh, lack of role models and mentors, and institutional practices and policies which prevent their further and full participation. We know that representation matters, Madam Speaker, and that's what these initiatives are about, are about increasing that representation, removing those barriers in a concrete way. Um, and again, there was conversation about the independence of universities. Allow universities to make these decisions for themselves. If they see this as an issue, if they recognize these barriers, certainly we can empower them to make those decisions to ensure that equity-seeking groups are represented on their research chair boards. And Madam Speaker, I'd just like to end with kind of a comparison conversation. I come from a province where there is a continuous debate on the importance of bilingualism, on whether or not we need to take concrete efforts to protect the French language. I find those conversations insulting, and I have found many of the comments in this House today regarding this motion from a position of perspective of a woman also insulting, Madam Speaker. Um, so those are my comments for today. And again, I hope that uh, our members across the way listened um, to some of the lived experiences of those who have made their way to this House despite some of these barriers that exist. Uh, and I look forward to their questions and comments. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The commentaire, the Honorable Deputy de Rivière des Médilles. Merci, Madam President. I have the impression that there was a une lecture très superficielle au premier niveau de ce projet de loi là. Ça ne porte pas sur un concept de discrimination, notre motion, absolument pas. On est pour l'équité, on est pour la diversité, on est pour l'inclusion. En parallèle, je demanderai à ma collègue qui a mis l'accent sur les femmes dans son discours, c'est extraordinaire, puis on en veut tous plus, comment elle réagit, entre autres, au fait qu'à l'Université de Montréal, en médecine, il y a actuellement 70 des femmes, approximativement 70 Des femmes qui sont, euh, qui sont les étudiantes. Est-ce qu'il devrait y avoir des critères pour pouvoir descendre le nombre de femmes étudiantes à l'Université de Montréal en médecine? L'honorable député de Fredericton. Merci, Mme Donnie. Merci, mon collègue, pour sa question. Et c'est un bon exemple d'une histoire de succès. Et cette institution devrait être applaudée. Et peut-être que nous devrions explorer quelles mesures ils ont pris pour assurer que les femmes avaient une bonne représentation, spécifiquement dans le domaine médical. Et donc, ce sont les conversations que nous devrions avoir. Mais je suis sûr que ce n'est pas un accident que ce environnement a été créé, que cette culture a été créée pour fostrer les femmes dans ces positions, dans ces halls et dans ces institutions. Donc, merci pour apporter ce fait à notre attention. Merci. Uh, the questions and comments. The Honourable Member for Sarnia Lambton. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and thank you to the member opposite for her advocacy. As you would know, I am the first female engineer in this House of Commons and began as an engineer when there were only 13 per cent women. There was significant systemic discrimination at that time, which I experienced throughout my career. And of course, as I was in construction, that was also quite a, a toxic environment. And I was sad to see in 2017 when the, I was a chair of the Status of Women and we studied how to get more women in STEM. Sadly, we heard testimony that this situation 
situation still exists. And so I wonder if the member would agree that we've not made progress as we should have, and does she have any suggestions as to how we could accelerate getting to equity? Honourable Member for Fredericton. Oh, thank you, Madam Speaker, and I thank Honourable Member from Sarnia Lambton for that wonderful question. Um, there's so much more that we could be doing, um, and I certainly identify with the example that she gave about you know, being a female engineer in a space that wasn't necessarily fostered to promote women's inclusion. Um, and I think about many of the women who are also here in this space, and I'm sure they've also faced some of the discrimination um, that we're, we're talking about today. Um, I'll give a couple examples that have come my way um, that really reflect the misogyny that's still in our society today. Uh, whether or not I've earned my position in this place, or whether or not I was offered certain things, or maybe I had relationships um, along the way, um, or maybe that I'm you know, not doing my, my duties at home, that I'm really neglecting my children perhaps by being in this space. These are the things we have to face when we try to enter um, these spaces that were not designed for us. And so what we need to do is continue to have these conversations. We need to be bold. We need to be you know, out loud. And we need to show women that they belong here, um, and they belong in engineering, and they belong in construction across this country. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Questions and comments? The Honourable Deputy of Nanaimo, Lady Smith. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and thank you to the member from Fredericton. I uh, wanted to just express my gratitude. I, I went from feeling quite frustrated and discouraged at the beginning of this debate to now feeling much more optimistic as we shift into solutions and addressing uh, real barriers in accessing equity. And so I wanted to uh, thank the member for that. We know that the rate of women holding research chairs in Canada still falls short of the parity goal. And I'm wondering if the member could share a little bit about in the seven years that the Liberals have had power, uh, there have been lots of, of great words being spoken, but we're not seeing that translating into action. Women are still being discriminated against. And can the member please share her thoughts on how do we best move forward to ensure that everyone feels welcome um, within our systems, including that which we're debating today? The Honourable Member for Fredericton has one minute to respond. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker, and I, I thank the Honourable Member from Nanaimo, Lady Smith. A wonderful riding in, in Canada I'm very familiar with. Um, you know, being a, a relatively new member uh, to the Liberal Caucus, um, it was really a, you know, a, kind of a fact-finding mission for me to see what, what great work has been done. Um, I, I have also heard some of the, you know, the wonderful speeches in this place and wondered, are our actions matching uh, what we're saying? Um, and you know what I found is they are. I had roundtables in my riding uh, over the last couple of weeks. Um, I was fortunate to have ministers and parliamentary secretaries visit. Uh, we met with, with groups that represent women in particular, Madam Speaker. We met with groups that represent um, you know, victims of domestic violence. And what they told me, they have never seen um, so much support, funding. Um, they really feel like their voices are being heard. And to me, that's concrete action on the ground. So what we say in this House is critically important, but of course those actions must follow. And I'm really seeing that across the country, and in particular in my riding of Fredericton. Thank you, Madam Speaker.